Hi everyone, in this video I'm doing something slightly different. Um, a question I see come up quite a lot in uh, the various uh, retro gaming forums, uh, Facebook groups I'm in, is I've just got a new PC or a second hand PC or been gifted a PC. It's this spec, what can I run on it? What kind of systems up to can I run? So um, I've got access to uh, four, four PCs here, four PCs and laptops, um, varying age. So what I'm gonna go through is run through each one um, using Batasera, um, just because it's, you know, it's, I can build up USB and it's, it's easy. Um, so, you know, the, the system isn't, isn't really, isn't really important. It's just, you know, as long as it's the same on all of them. So it's a, it's a fair level playing field. Um, yeah, to so run that, start with, you know, lower systems like Mega Drive, MAME, and then work way up through Dreamcast, PlayStation, etc., into things like PS3 and Wii U, to see if we can really push it. And basically just report along the way how, they, how well they do. Um, so kind of try and get an idea of roughly what age and what spec CPU, etc., graphics card, We'll run what systems to try and give some people some guidance. So, so yeah, without further ado, what we'll do is go on to the first one, which is come up in two seconds. It's going to be uh, an HP 8100 desktop. Here it is. Um, so this one, I tried to do a video capture, which I've done on the other systems, but obviously it didn't work with this one with the graphics card. So I had to uh, had to manually record it. So but anyway, you can see here this is uh, an old i5 processor. 650 running at 3.2 gig. This is kind of like was released in like 2010, so it's a good what 13 years old now. Uh, and it has just as a standard onboard um, Intel HD graphics. It's a two core CPU, um, you know, four threads though, it's got hyper thread, hyper threading enabled, um, and eight gig of DDR RAM. Like I say, all the, all the details are in the description. It's so like I say, I'm running Batasira here. Um, so start with Mega Drive. I mean, I'm expecting things like Mega Drive to run on all the systems, you know, and you can see here it runs pretty smoothly. Um, obviously I've, I've muted the video, uh, sorry, the audio, because um, obviously, yeah, recording off my phone is <laughs> not the best quality. But anyway, yeah, so just be a few seconds here of Aladdin, make sure it always runs okay and runs smoothly. As you can see, yeah, it's running at full speed. Um, yeah, just to say, so obviously I'm running back to zero, but I'm not, you know, I haven't tweaked any settings, haven't kind of like done any upscaling, anything, like, anything like that. This is kind of just the, uh, the standard config that, that you get. I've literally downloaded the latest version of back zero, which I think at the time of doing this is version 35. Um, uh, put onto a USB drive um, and then boot the systems from it. So there you go. That was a quick, quick blast on, uh, on Aladdin, on the Mega Drive. All running lovely. Um, so now we're going to go through, and I think the next one on the list is MAME, if I remember correctly. There we go. So what I'm going to try and do is, as I work through, is play the same systems in the same order and play the same game as well. So just scrolling down the list here. For, I think it's 64th Street. There we go. So, I mean, obviously MAME is a bit more difficult one to to kind of test because obviously you know, some games are going to be a bit more demanding than others. But you know, I thought I'd just you know pick a game that I knew was kind of like middle of the middle of the road and give it a try. As you can see again, this you know, loads, loads fine. There was a, a ROM warning there. I don't know whether that's because it's you know, a, you know a slightly incorrect dump of the game or the issue of the game or whether it's a mismatch of ROM version versus main version which I'll be surprised at because I normally make sure all the ROM sets match to avoid uh, any problems but like I say yeah loads fine one's fine so pretty happy with that and kind of expected that as well now we move on to, to final burn Neo to be honest this should be the same and I guess the other thing to note as well obviously this is this is probably the oldest oldest system I've got like I say the CPU was launched beginning of 2010 so I mean, yeah, this this PC has been around, yeah, a few years old now. You know, based on you know, if you if you assume that it came out, or you know, the PC was was made around about the same time the CPU was launched, yeah, beginning of, beginning of 2020. So you could say the PC was from you know around about 2010. Um, but I say it's still playing. You can still play you know, the Mega Drive, Master System, NES, SNES, 
It's now doing Arcade with Mame and Final Burn Neo, as you see here. Runs, runs perfectly fine. And just there, just scrolling through the menus. With, you know, showing the graphics. Um, no problem at all. Wouldn't, wouldn't struggling at all, so... So, yeah, it kind of, kind of shows that people... You can get started with emulation. Just even with a, with a basic PC. You don't need any of these, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of uh, gaming PC with latest generation graphics card to, to run all this. And a lot of emulation is is more CPU intensive. Uh, it's, you know, when it's emulating the old hardware, it's, you know, that's all taken care of in uh, <coughs> by, the, by, the, by the CPU. So, but yeah, quick go on um, one of my favorite Street Fighter games here, the you know, uh, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. So I'm just going to run through this one, let it run for a few seconds. So yeah, just carrying a bit, a bit longer. Couple of this, like I said, it's one of my favourite games. Once I, uh, once I start, hard to stop. So, but just uh, complete this first round and hopefully win. <laughs> but as, as you can see, yes, it's running fine, full speed, no issues, no glitches, and, and obviously, you know, I've muted the sound, but the, you know, the audio is all fine as well. There's no, there's no. Um, delay, distortion, or crack, anything like that. So we're all good. So yeah, that's the kind of base system's done, which, like I say, you'd expect to run on everything. So now I'm gonna step it up slightly and attempt GameCube. Which, to be honest, I wasn't expecting to work, and this is pretty much what it gets to a white screen. I think once you get onto these later generation systems. It's more where, where you need a decent graphics card, where it, you know you it runs sort of OpenGL or Vulkan, you know, to sort of you know, <clears throat> recreate those 3D graphics. So, you know, all, all, all the systems up to now are sort of fairly sort of standard. <clears throat> so what I w was doing here was just having a quick check to see if I could get it running. In, um, cause with with Batasira, for those that know it, you've normally got a couple of different um, emulators built in. Normally the RetroArch cores, or if there's more than one core. And also a standalone version of the of the emulator. So I'm just going to try it in a couple of different emulators, see if it will work. But you know, I've got a feeling this isn't working. Just down to the graphics card. That standard standard onboard Intel graphics card isn't isn't the best. So again, just try try it with Dolphin. Now trying with the uh, RetroArch Core. And being an older CPU, I'm just changing the API back to, to OpenGL in hopes of getting it working, but yeah, it doesn't even launch that time, so. <laughs> so yeah, abandoned GameCube, that's, yeah, this system's just too old, not powerful enough to run that, so. Like I say. So I'm gonna go for Dreamcast now. And uh, classic Crazy Taxi. Now this one, it does launch, but as you can see, the graphics are a little bit garbled. Uh, again, down to the down to the GPU not supporting yeah, the necessary features and or just not being powerful enough to to render the 3D graphics. I mean, you, you can see those those you know it's a bit glitchy. It's quite a lot of the graphics missing, um, but I mean, the speed wasn't too bad. But it's just yeah, I think it's just down to the feature set of the graphics card it just wasn't up to it. Um, so now I'm going to try PlayStation. Hope you know, expecting this one to work. So I guess if we're going up in sort of, you know, I guess requirement or power requirements, processing requirements for each system, it probably should have been PlayStation One first, then the Dreamcast, then the GameCube. Um, yeah. So here I had a, a slight issue with PlayStation initially; it wouldn't run, and I'm pretty sure when it's on auto, it tends to prefer the RetroArch cores. So I'm just manually changing it to. Uh, to Duck Station, standalone emulator, running in OpenGL. But for whatever reason, it had um, this is where it had a bit of a glitch, <laughs> and it and it bombed out, um, and then um, just wouldn't run at all. So, so yeah, I, 
from this point, this is kind of where we, we reached the end of this system. I did restart it and do PS1 again, and it did work. It ran fine. As soon as I changed the emulator, it ran fine. So for this age system, you know, up to PlayStation 1, so all, all the old 8-bit, 16-bit systems, up to PlayStation 1, you're all good. As soon as you go above that, you, you're in trouble. Um, on, so on to the next one. This is a, a similar age system. This is a, an HP laptop um, with a um, i5 again, but mobile version. This is a similar time. This is around about 2010. Um, the CPU was launched. It's a again two-core CPU with hyper threading, so it gives you four cores. Again, it's got eight gig of RAM, so it's it's fairly similar, um, and it's got a, an onboard Intel HD graphics card. So this is going to run through the same steps again. And as you notice again, I had to record this one on the phone because uh, again, with these older onboard HD graphics cards. For whatever reason, my, my capture device didn't like them and it didn't pick up any input. So, I had to go old school, record it on my phone, unfortunately. And so, with this one, again, I think it's going to be it's fairly similar. So, the older 8 bit, 16 bit systems, you're all good. Main, final burn. Also, yeah, the caveat on that, yeah, with with MAME, there's going to be some some newer arcade machines. Depending on what ROM set you're using, if you're using one of the old ROM sets, sort of around, you know, sort of the, I guess, MAME 2010, which is what uh, 0.139 the ROM set, or from 2014, it's sort of the, the 159, 0159. That's kind of age. Anything sort of there and backwards, you'll be fine. All the standards sort of classic arcade games. As soon as you start moving towards a more recent ROM set. You start getting um, more up-to-date recent arcade systems. It might, you know, it probably will struggle. But for, you know, for the classic games in Mame and you know, the arcade sets, you, you can be fine in these older systems. As I said before, even though these older systems, there's, uh, you can see that they move through the menus fine, showing up the the video clips and all the artwork, so they don't struggle there at all. So I'm just going to bring up. 64th Street again. And I will eventually play this. I think I had issue with the, with the button mappings on the controller. So, but yeah. So you can see again, it's, it's running fine. It's running full speed, as you would expect. Like I said, this this one is actually fairly close to the uh, to the desktop that I did initially. Um, but like I say, it's, it's the mobile version of the processor, and it's slightly slower. The the first one, the the, first, the desktop we had was an HP desktop running at 3.2 gig. On the CPU, this one's running at 2.4, and is the mobile version of CPU, so you expect to be a little, a little weaker than its, its desktop version. But yeah, anyway, yeah. So this version of main running, running well. There we go. I got bored of that one in the end. So I flip back, and then yeah, next one up, final button again. And you notice this one has got a slightly different layout on the menu because there are a couple of these systems which I already had Batisera installed on uh, and obviously this is one of them. Um, so no, this isn't, the previous one was. So it had a few more systems and it had a different, a different view, different theme installed on it. Whereas this is one that I had to just install a fresh copy of, uh, or use a fresh copy of, um, of Batisera. So, Hence why it looks like different, but like I say, it's, it's the same version of Batasira, version 35, just with the kind of default settings. So yeah, Street Fighter again here, all running fine. This is one I've seen slow down. If, if you're on a less powerful system, I've seen this one kind of suffer, and the audio suffers on this one, on a lower spec machine, but on this one it's fine. Also, I've got, got the sound muted, but it's yeah, it's, it's running absolutely fine, full speed, as you can see there. 
and again, <laughs> playing the game, and for whatever reason, I have to finish the round. Like I say, it is one of my favourite games, my favourite fighting games at least. I'm not particularly good at it, <laughs> but it just, uh, it's just enjoyable. And of course, it's yeah, I've got memories of playing this in the arcade, so... Which I guess is what it's all about. So yeah. Well, looks like I carried on round two in this one. Sorry about that. Ah, uh, there we go. That'd be come out, sorry. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea, that works fine. Yeah, see so there's a few more on here. Now let's we're gonna go for GameCube. And memory served on this one, this is a, a very similar story to the first one. You just get this white screen booting up. And uh, yeah, no. It does want to play. So again, I think it just, it's just with the standard Intel on board. I think you know, back in the day where when these systems were released and you had the onboard HD graphics, it was pretty much you know more focused at just you know the Windows and Windows desktop, making sure they could give you a decent resolution for your, for your desktop, that kind of stuff. They weren't really geared towards gaming. They might do sort of basic 3D, but, but that was it. Whereas these days, and as you're seeing in some of the latest videos, I've, you know, the other two systems I've got coming up, a lot more powerful. One's got a dedicated AMD Radeon card in it, and the other one has got uh, an Intel HD 530 graphics card, which is still on board, but it's a modern onboard Intel card, and it runs a lot better, as you'll see. But yeah, just on Dreamcast, and you see it's pretty much the same as what we had on the on the previous system. It does run, and and what is running runs at an okay speed. But I think it's just down to the uh, down to the, the, the GPU. It's running, but it's obviously it's just just not rendering correctly, not rendering all the graphics. But yeah, I think it's just, just down to age of the card, not supporting uh, the features that that's needed. So yeah, like I said, I think I let it run just for a few seconds longer. Just you can see the speed that is actually so it's got like there's hope there but but no that's not running properly so now we move on to playstation one and uh yeah medieval yeah so you yeah, have to get slight issue on this one as well but it, it kind of starts the intro video but then then bombs out so I think not like on this one like on the like on the desktop I found that uh, going to duck station and setting the the GPU to OpenGL <coughs> fixed it Got to uh, <laughs> got to forgive the, uh, the dodgy cam work on this one. I, you know, as you can see, more the bottom of the screen than you can the top. I think I've just about chopped off the top, but like I say, it's just to get the idea of, of how well it performs. And you can see now, now I change the duct station, it flows quite well. Again, this is one of these classic games I remember playing on the original original hardware. Long, long time ago now. You can see this runs. This runs fine. Runs at full speed. No problems at all. So I'll just go in and just just confirm it all works fine and loads. So just go into the uh, the first level. There is actually there's a medieval two. I'm pretty sure on the PSP there's a Medieval Resurrection. 
And I did actually, I'm sure I had a copy in the PS3 as well. Or the PS4. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure that's completely uh, remade game or just kind of like uh, a revamped version of this. But uh, yeah. If you haven't, haven't played this game, have, have a go on it, it's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good fun. And of course, with, with the PlayStation, I mean, possibly on this hardware, but you know, certainly on more modern hardware, PlayStation is quite quite a good candidate for uh, increasing resolution. And so, you know, you've got people running running this in HD and putting some filters on to kind of smooth out all the graphics and the anti-analyzing and that kind of stuff. And yeah, you know, results are you know, pretty impressive. You can play these old games that you know, like that one was quite blocky, and then you, you run it through some filters and upscale the resolution it you know comes comes out in HD and looks <laughs> looks really good. So just for a laugh, <laughs> let's uh let's try PS2. Which it thinks about for a second and says nah not having it. <laughs> so again to be expected. I mean on the other one, at least on this one it's trying the other one on the on the on the desktop it just kind of bombed out. The PS2 one tries to load yeah, doesn't so just have a quick check. Like I say, you got there, you got the PP SSPP standalone emulator, or you've got the RetroArch Core. I'm just trying the uh, standalone, and nah, not having it. So, uh, kind of, yeah, again, reach the reach the limit on this one. Um, Again, just for a laugh, let's try Wii, but obviously <laughs> not expected to run at all. And again, it's, it's similar to what you get in the GameCube. Also, they, they both use Dolphin as the emulator, and you get kind of the same results. So I'd imagine if you run out standalone, you run it separately and have a look, it'll be complaining about the GPU and about it not supporting certain features. So yeah, white screen of, white screen of death on this one. Um, I think I do leave it a few seconds just to make sure it's not doing something, but that's pretty much it for this system. So yeah, these, these older systems, these old i5s from kind of like around about 2010, fine, fine for the older systems, fine for the 8 and 16-bit systems like the Mega Drive and Snares, etc., and PlayStation One. So I mean, that, that's a, that's a lot of systems you can emulate. Um, so on to the next one now. This one is actually. My, my main desktop PC. Um, you know, I actually did a video capture on this one. Um, and actually, yeah, so fresh boot of the PC and booting off the, uh, the USB drive with Batasira because the actual PC itself has got Windows on. And that's one of the good things about Batasira. So this isn't <laughs> a video about Batasira, which is what I'm using, but you know, I've got Batasira installed on a, in this case, on a USB drive, and I can just plug it in and, and boot up. You know, whereas with this PC, it's got Windows 11 installed, and I use it every day. So if I don't want to do this, I can uh, unplug it and, and just use Windows as normal. So yeah, this, this system is, like I say, a bit more powerful, a bit more new, a bit more new, a bit more newer, uh, a bit more recent. So this is um, it's still quite old, to be honest. It's a fourth gen um, i7 um, running at, at 3.6. It bursts up to four gig, sort of the end max. Um, it's it's got four cores with high threads, so it gives you eight threads. Um, and this one's you know, it's a bit hard to tell from that that length and description there, but it's actually a, a, an AMD Radeon R9 um, 200 series GPU with um, it's four gig of DDR5 RAM, um, and the main system has got 16 gig of DDR3 RAM. Like I said, so it's a fourth gen, and we're up to what? 12th gen now CPU so it's this one's circa 2014 um, so again it's still like nine years old it's still you know but like I say it's my everyday PC and with that graphics card and the beefy CPU it runs a lot of stuff on which you'll see in this demo here so yeah again sign up with Mega Drive yeah all runs fine 
full speed, no issues. Like I say, this is done with a proper, proper capture card. I say proper capture card, it was, it was a cheap one off Amazon for £7. <laughs> but it, it works really well. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's £7. You plug it in the USB drive, uh, sorry, the USB port, plug HDMI into it, and then just use the free software to capture the input. And yeah, it does really well. Uh, you'll have noticed on this one as well, because um, I'm using the proper capture. You know, it's got decent sound, so I've actually enabled the sound on this one, just to make it a bit more interesting. While well, I'm having to listen to the background music or, or my voice all the time. But yeah, that was Mega Drive. All looking good. And now we move on to Mame. So again, still that, still that warning. I have to check that out and see what that is. But it doesn't seem to affect the game, so. Yeah, all, uh, all running smooth, as you expect. Yeah, <coughs> that's enough of that. And again, in the final burn. I mean, you see the, uh, it, it can scroll through the menus a bit quicker, this one. This is me now getting lost, <laughs> trying to find that Street Fighter game. It's a problem when you've got so many games. So yeah, third strike. We've got her in the end. Yeah, you know it's well on the on back here it's got the, all the bevels built in, so this one can like make it look like screen in the middle of an arcade. I think it's quite cool. Again all that this all that stuff is kind of out of the box so, uh, with battle Sierra. Now. Of course, other animation front ends are available. So yeah, again, for the third time, we can And so yeah, they all, they all play same speed, so again, like I say, you'd expect this one to work fine, which it does. Again, I just can't help myself, I can't stop until I finish the round. Like I say, not particularly good at it, but there we go. And I come out, excellent, okay. So yeah, so far so good, as you'd expect. Like I say, we've stepped up now, a bit more powerful system. So yeah, let's give old GameCube a go. I'm fully expecting to work, and yet yeah, it does load. Just get the intro and get to the action. Spend a quick Grand Prix. See in action. Oh, it's a good start. This is running. Going perfectly fine. Well, I could have possibly enabled the uh, uh, FPS counter on some of these systems. You can see 
actually kind of the uh, yeah, FPS speed, but I think you can kind of tell from the screen that it's running pretty smoothly. So that's definitely how I prefer my games to run. I kind of I'd rather it run at full speed with slightly lower graphics than you know full high definition graphics, but with a bit of slowdown. It's much better to have yeah, when you're trying to play a game, have it run smoothly. Not it worth it playing a game and having it sort of glitching and frame skipping. So again, that Mario Kart's kind of that go-to game to test. And again, not that I'm particularly good at it. <laughs> As you can see. Yeah, I mean, obviously, hopefully you're not getting bored of the gameplay, but I wanted to run it for at least a couple of minutes just so you can see that, yeah, there's no slowdown after a certain period of time. Yeah, it does play through at full speed all the way, as it's doing. But you can also this one as well, it's, it's running 4x3 and there's no, um, no bezels at the side, so that's pretty much what you can set up if you want to. And there, there are settings as well, you can, you can tweak the settings in the MMA to, to force it to, to widescreen 60x9. I think occasionally it can cause issues with games, but on the most part, it's fine. So yep, GameCube's a go, that's all good. There's Wii and Wii U in there, which we'll come back to. So let's try Dreamcast again. Right, so it's kind of failed up until now. Hey, hey, it's party time. Let's have some fun. All right. Go ahead and pick a car and driver. Gina. Okay, let's play cool. Hey, it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here it the controls again. So, yeah, classic game, I remember having this um, on the PS2. Playing it and just trying to get that high score. But, yeah, it's one of those games. It's, it's fun to just jump into two minutes. It holds up pretty well today. You can see that's, yeah, that's running probably really fine. Probably fast as well. I think, I, can, I think that's not the Japanese version of the game, where the auto is in English, so... Anyway, that's enough of that, that's all running fine, that's all good. Quick blast on PlayStation, so... Like I said, with this system, because it's a, an older system... Sorry, a more recent system than the ones before. You know, I'm expecting it to run a lot more of the systems, which so far it is. Evil. Skip the intro. This one's fine first time. Get past all those. And like I say, yeah, it's running, running fine. It's got quite a nice bezel again on this one. Might have to find out where they are and steal them. 
my, my other system, so. I do use Battle Zero, I do use it on um, on the next system, actually, the next system up, which is the last system I've got set up in it. Go to the TV, dedicated machine, running Battle Zero. So, you'll probably notice on that one it's got a different theme loaded and and probably a few more systems than, than I've got on this version. But yeah, I, I use other systems more for innovation. On, on Android, it's, it's RetroX. Um, I've got Retro Arch on my Xbox. So, uh, yeah, if you've, you've got an Xbox and you put Retro Arch on it and play all these games, then yeah, check out my video on that. But like I say, on, on, on Retro Arch, you can obviously set the bezels up as well. So I have got some set up on my system at the moment, but I also quite like these ones I've got here. So I'm sure if I find out where the image is, I can uh, extract it. Yeah, I'll just um, think on this one to do play a little bit longer. Just jump into the first level. Like I say it plays, it plays pretty well. And like I say, PlayStation One is a prime candidate for for upscaling. Yeah, I think as well, just with the graphics as well, that, I think it looks fine, but I think with the capture card, plug like say, because it was quite cheap, it works, but I think the image isn't quite as crisp as it could be. But for seven pounds, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> definitely not complaining. Captures in, uh, in 1080p, so. so. Yeah, PlayStation, all good. Now we're gonna move up, take it another level, so PS2. See how well this runs. So again, quite a nice, uh, quite a nice bezel. So, obviously, bear in mind again, we're in, uh, we're doing PS2 now. And we're still in a system that's what um, nine years old. And it's running PS2. I guess, like I say, and again, as I mentioned before, with with emulation, it's not an exact science. Everyone's system is different. Each game is different. So even though we've got we've got takedown one in here, takedown three, running pretty well, looking good, no issues, no glitches anything like that. You know that doesn't mean that every single game for PS2 is going to run like this. You know some are more demanding than others. Some are just you know programmed differently, so aren't as uh, compatible with the emulators. So I think mean, you know it's quite easy for people to forget. You know I've got an emulator for PS2. It should be able to play any game. But you know, it's not as easy as that. So I will let this one run through. Annoyingly it does this training video. So we'll just uh, stick with this for a second. Okay, something new is Crash Aftertouch. 
If and when you crash, activate impact time. When you are in impact time, you can steer your wreck. How cool is that? Use crash aftertouch to gain aftertouch takedown. Or to help you get to the places other crashers can't reach. That was a public service announcement brought to you by Crash FM. Right, so finally we get to the game. He says after it loads for a little bit longer. Right, so here we go. See, this is running very nicely. Again, PS2 is, I guess, similar to PS1, is a prime candidate for, for upscaling, increasing resolution. Like I said, the, the games are still really good games, they, they hold up really well. So, yeah. Like I said, but I haven't done that here, this is just about just doing a standard and just, yeah, see how well they run. Like I said, you can, you can push it, and I expect this system would be fine with the, the upscaling. So good there. No, just again. Like I say, the the video on the capture card is not as quite sharp as it should be. Plus, all the audio, the audio is okay. Um, but I wouldn't kind of judge how well the emulation runs yeah, just purely based on this and the, and, you know, the video and audio here because they're obviously through a catch card it's going to look better when you're running running it natively as you can see this is running, running pretty smoothly pretty fast I can't think you know, I don't notice any, any slowdown so I'm more than happy with this I think I'm enjoying it a bit too much. Like I said, I've, I've been through, I've recorded these videos kind of like one by one, separately, and now put it all together. So. So maybe in hindsight I should have recorded slightly less of gameplay, <laughs> but it's just to you know, give the idea that you can play a full game. There's no none of this where it plays for a few minutes and then and dies. It's yeah, it's pretty stable. There you go. Twelve takedowns before I before I died. Thing here. I'm just, just letting it get to the end so I actually can actually save progress. The next time I play out, I'd have to go through that. Yeah, the old uh, training or intro video again. So there we go. Yeah, back to the uh, back to the main menu and we'll exit out of there. So yeah, quick blast on PSP now. But honestly, if, if PS2 plays that well, you really expect PSP to be okay as well. I mean, I think PSP can be a bit troublesome sometimes. Emulation, and again, so this is Outrun. Outrun, one of my uh, all-time favourite games. Initially, the arcade version, but obviously this version that's on the PSP and on the it's on the PlayStation 3 and a few other systems as well. It's pretty good as well. Yeah. Ready? A full start level, I found out what the key was. But yeah, so this is running at the standard resolution, I think, for uh, for the PSP. 
Um, again, so it's a, it, obviously the original system is quite a small screen, so this is another good candidate for, for upscaling. Like I said, I haven't done it here. Just going to go with the, uh, with the stand settings. And like I said, because it's quite a low resolution for that small screen, it does look a little bit blocky when you've got it here, yeah, running in HD. Yeah, full size monitor, so. Oof, again, not too great there. Yeah, one of the things I loved about this game was the, uh, was the music as well. Anyway, that's enough of that. One's fine. So right now, now we're going towards the top end. PS3. So I've only got the one game loaded here. Have to burn it. And again, there's going to be other systems, like other games that are probably a bit more demanding. But this is just to show that you can emulate PS3 even on this this older CPU. I know you, you look at the um, the um, PS3 emulator, RPSC3. I got that right. Um, it's got quite high specs requirements. Um, but like I say, this is a, a fourth gen CPU uh, uh, from like you know nine years ago. Um, but like I say, it, it's an old PC, old old CPU, but it's quite a good spec when you know for what for its age it's you know 3.6 gig with, with a max frequency of four gigahertz it's, you know, it's four cores eight threads and of course this system has got 16 gig RAM and a, uh, an AMD CPU and actually interesting story I guess well maybe interesting maybe not but I actually got this PC for free it was gifted on a, a Facebook page someone was giving it away it came with no hard drive, but it was yeah, you know, with a case, motherboard, CPU RAM, everything was in it. All I had to do was add, add a hard drive, which I put an FSD in there, put some other you know, mechanical drives just for storage, and yeah, away it goes. It's been absolutely brilliant. I just, you know, had to do some basic stuff, and I just updated the BIOS, updated some firmware, and it's running Windows 11 absolutely fine. Obviously, it's one of those ones where it hasn't got a TPM chip. And when Windows 11 tries to do the install, it's upgrade from Windows 10, it tells me that the CPU is not supported and all this kind of stuff. So, but there's, there's ways around that. Um, and yeah, Windows 11 is running up in the final on this. So. Yeah, bargain for free. And as you see, it emulates, emulates PS3 absolutely fine. So, so we've done PS3. Now let's go back to Nintendo and go to the Wii. Which I guess when you, you get to this stage, you kind of, if PS3's run that well, you kind of hope, you kind of expect that Wii would run. Which, as you see, that's... Also with, with these Wii games, with, in Batasira, you can use the standard gamepad, like I'm doing at the moment. This is actually, um, on here, I'm running a, a Xbox One controller via Bluetooth. On the other Batasira box I've got, I've got a, a USB dongle that allows you to connect a, a wireless Xbox 360 controller. And that runs really well. But you can actually, I've got a Dolphin bar, sensor bar, connected to that one. And I actually use the Wii controllers, so... Um, you can actually choose to play these games with Wii controllers, and you can so you can play all the Wii Sports, anything with the motion sensor and bowling, all that kind of stuff. That all works really well. So yeah, that's yeah, another another good thing with the with the Dolphin, the emulator. Because we do have a, I do have a Wii outside in the, in the shed, in the drawer. It's not not plugged in, obviously, um, but you know. You can emulate it so well these days using Dolphin and also with the Dolphin bar. I've just got the controllers, the Wiimotes, and because the emulation is that good, I, I don't need 
the Wii plugged in, I can, I can run all the games off the PC. So, as you can see, this is this is running pretty well. Again, a, a good game. Fun game to play, not particularly good at it. There's the job. And I think on this I do finish the race. Just to show the completeness. There are longer they can last. There you go. <laughs> yeah, not the best, but you know. And then last but not least, there's Wii U. So this is kind of, I guess, the top end. Similar to PS3, I guess, or I don't know, I think Wii U is a bit later than PS3. So again, Mario Kart, standard. So you can see that this runs, runs pretty good. I mean, you will notice occasionally on this, uh, in the top left-hand corner, you get a message about how it's rendering or uh, creating shaders. That's kind of how this, how the emulator works for. For this it, it kind of and then ps3 emulator does a similar thing but the ps3 emulator you get the option to create all the shaders compile the shaders up front you can see it just did a couple just then it does that's pretty quick but it can sometimes cause a little slowdown uh, like i say on the ps3 emulator you get the, the choice to pre-compile them beforehand so it doesn't do them during the game with this one you can't um i'm not sure whether you can sort of download them anywhere and ma manually put, put the uh, the shaders in um, I did see someone mention a tip for this game, for, for uh, Mario Kart the Wii U, is that if you leave it at the menu screen uh, unattended, it'll start going into like a demo mode and it'll start loading each of the different tracks, like random tracks, and it will actually, um, it doesn't just play video, it actually loads the track and plays it, so you know, someone said you can just leave it overnight, cycling through all the different tracks and it'll, you know, by the time you come back in the morning, it would have rendered and created pretty much all the uh, all the shaders you need. So it didn't, yeah, it depends if you bother about doing that. I mean, like I say, it's doing it here occasionally. So it done another four there, another five, but not notably affecting the game. So, and to me, this is this running pretty well. Um, I don't know whether it is running full speed. It looks like full speed to me, but it's hard to tell without. I've never had a Wii U. I, I never played it on original hardware, so I don't know whether this is <laughs> this is full speed or not. It feels feels pretty good when you're playing it. So, yeah, like I say, you see the graphics on here are quite quite more advanced. And again, the system's playing it with pretty much no issues. I mean, you probably, I probably could go and tweak it. And uh, see, there's a very slight pause there where it compiled a few more shaders. Well, so they only happen once. once. Once it compiles them, it, it saves them. So it won't, won't do the same ones again. It's just where different things happen on the screen. It has to, to draw different objects. It creates those shaders.
Oh, there we go. I'm doing quite well in that one. Yeah. <laughs> Finished third in the end. But anyway, that, that's pretty much it. You can see it runs all those systems fine. That's pretty much the end maximum systems you've got on, on Bad Seal at the moment. So um, I think the only one I kind of missed out was Xbox. Um, but I, you know, I'm sure that's going to run absolutely fine. So now we go on to the last one. I appreciate this is quite a long video, but so this is um, this is my dedicated uh, Battle Zero box. Little PC sits sits in a separate room, connected to a TV with the Xbox 360 controller, wireless controller with a little USB dongle. And so yeah, this is yeah. Um, one, this is one of the the Dell Optiflex 3050s. It's a little it's kind of micro micro PC, very small very neat compact probably about 20 centimeters wide 20 centimeters deep very small um again got this pretty cheap off ebay again with, without a hard drive in it um you, you find these all over the place there's they're kind of like x business ones i guess that X companies sell off so yeah i picked up pretty cheap on i can't you know i'll check how much it was and stick those in the description but it was it was pretty cheap and yeah like i said i've got i think like a 500 gig drive in it which has got a good selection of games. Which, you know, you'll hopefully see in a minute. I'll just do a quick reboot on there, just so I guess almost to, so you can see <laughs> this. This really is a what it is. So again, this is this is still Batista, it's still Batista uh, version 35. But like I say, this is my machine that's already had it installed for a while. So I've got a different theme running. Quite nice theme this one. So again, as before, we're just going to system to show the specs of the machine. Yeah, so yeah, 500 gig drive in it. So yeah, so this is a another Intel-based CPU. It's the uh, the i5 6500, so a sixth gen. So again, this is an older one. Front 2.5 gig will burst to 3.1, and this, like I said, this has got the standard onboard HD graphics, HD 530. So this TPU, yeah, is, like I say, running at 2.5 gig. It's, it was launched around 2015. So again, this is still what seven, eight years old. It's not not modern, but by, by any means, but it's it's a recent PC as PCs go, I guess. Um, four cores, um, no hyperthreading, so four cores, four threads. Uh, it's got eight gig of, I believe it's DDR4. It's harder to check in here without, if I had Windows running it would be easy, but it's harder to check in here because the, the board does support DDR3 and DDR4 RAM. So, it's either, but it's, yes, yeah, 8GB RAM, like I say, onboard graphics card, um, which runs at 350MHz, but can max at 1.1GHz. So again, go through the, um, go through the standard games, all running fine. You notice only the bezels on here are slightly different, so in here I've got um, per game bezels enabled, so which is quite cool. So we, for each game you play, you've got the uh, corresponding bezel. We've got Aladdin bezel here, and that's the uh, the bezel project, which yeah, worth checking out online because they, that you know that works for various systems, and it's obviously built into built into Batista, which is handy. So again, yeah, Mega Drive fine. Let's just try Mame. And just trying to work out where in the order I think the fourth street is. There we go. Got it in the end. So actually, yeah, you see here, you've got the, uh, this is like a default generic bezel. Mm. Got my corners here, the bezel project, where it's from. So if it, if it can't find a matching bezel for a particular game, It'll be generic game, uh, the generic one, so you'll see you're not left with nothing. So. This is running nicely. <clears throat> and again, obviously, for this system, I'm going to use the cat one, which is good. As usual, though, you can't win the game. <laughs> Play far too long. But anyway, yeah. Main's all good. And if we're following suit, we're going to go down to Final Burn. Yeah, so as you can see, this has got a lot more systems on it. Okay. 
I'm just gonna whiff through. Yes, yeah, see? Okay, how much street fire? And let's have a quick blast on the uh, on third strike. So again, on here you can see we've got the uh, the gain bezel. Pretty good. As usual, play this game, have to complete the round. this one just and that's enough of that <laughs> okay yeah so you can't expect everything to work up until here Again, and Mario Kart. Obviously, this time it's showing the uh, generic bezel. If you remember in the, in the other video, obviously there was no bezel for uh, for this game. Obviously, you hadn't filled it up or scraped it. Like I say, this is uh, a system I've had battery on for a while, so I've uh, made sure all the artwork and, and bezels are, are set up. Okay, that's GameCube done, so we're going to switch around now. So I've got quite a few systems on there getting lost where I am, but yeah, Dreamcast. So we'll do the same. Find Crazy Taxi.
getting a custom bezel there. Dramatic pause. There we go. Quite sure what happened there. See again, this is playing, playing well, playing full speed. No issues. Like I said, one of those games you can just jump into and uh, have a quick blast on. Anyway, I'll do for that. Okay, so so far so good. Like I say, this is you know performing pretty similarly to the uh, to the, the main PC that I had. Like I say, you know, this is only kind of a year or so newer than that system, and it's yeah, that was an, an old i5. This is a Sixth gen i5, but the other one's an older fourth gen i7. This is a newer sixth gen i5, slower clock rate. The other one was 3.6, only 2.5, and only four cores, where the other one was four core with high press, so it had eight. Um, and obviously, only eight gig of RAM, and you only had 16. But having said, I mean, having said that, I mean, I don't think you need masses amount of RAM for emulation for, for many of these systems. Again, yeah, PlayStation One, Medieval. <clears throat> Just skip the intros. I think actually this one, I, I, I did actually tweet the setting, or have that in the past. I think it is slightly upscaled, or at least antennalized this, smoothing out some of the graphics. So, yeah, skip the dialogue, skip, skip, skip. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's upscaled slightly, not massively, but definitely. It was a bit smoother than the uh, than the other ones I've done, and also this is running full screen, full widescreen, so hence no bezels. Like I say, it's running fine, no issues with that at all. Okay, that's right. So now we have PS2. Because I may have tweaked this one slightly, like I say in the past, it's this is my main battery system. You can see here PlayStation 2 is running full screen, they're running 16 by 9. Whereas um, on the uh, the other systems that are just sort of booting off a fresh copy, they were all 4 by 3 and with the bezels. So I think I have tweaked the settings here slightly. 
can see it just looks a little bit smoother in general. Yeah, as you can see, it runs, uh, runs pretty well, this game. So you find, I guess it's similar to, as I mentioned before, with main, you get to decisions like this, PS2, PS3, etc. Then not all games are going to run perfectly smooth. Obviously, you know, obviously there's, you know the, with the compatibility with the uh, emulators to start with, but also some some games might be more demanding on your hardware than others. So your system you know, might run a game like this fine, but you know, another game that's a bit more graphically demanding, it might struggle with. So it's a bit, you know, I wouldn't say hit and miss, it's just a bit of experimentation and just, I think people, yeah, like I say, people have got to remember emulation, you know, isn't a guaranteed, everything's gonna run fine. At the end of the day, you're emulating a system you're kind of faking it, but you're tricking the system into thinking it's running on a, a real physical device and it's not. So. Yeah, I'm desperately trying to skip this bit, but there's no, you know, there's no button combination that lets you skip, unfortunately. I think it's one of those mandatory intros that has to run every time you, you start a new game or start a game for the first time. And yeah, we'll uh, sit with this for a second and you just see that it's running nicely. Too clever. We can see, like I say, this is the the last system, the little Deloitte Flex, which is effectively a business PC, a little small form factor, meant to sit on an office desk somewhere. But it's running PS2 perfectly fine, and it's, it's just using the onboard graphics, the uh, the Intel HD graphics. And um, like I say, it's such a small board. I don't think you can, you probably can't even put a graphics card in it anyway. It's that small. It's literally, you know, you've got the power supply in there, you've got the size of a two and a half inch drive, and, and not much room for, for much else. So, but like I say, you know, with the, uh, the modern, I say modern, this is still a few years old, but the more modern um, HD, Intel HD graphics, they do, they do, they cope pretty well with, uh, with games, as you can see, and emulation. Like I said before, a lot of it does still come down to CPU, and yeah, you need to have a decent, decent powered CPU.
And there we go, finished. So uh, hopefully I uh, exit this soon. PSP. And again, same game, outrun. And again, we'll have to see. I think this is another one that I may have tweaked. Yeah, so like I say, even though I've, I've tweaked on this system, like the PS1, PS2, and probably PSP, um, it doesn't really affect the, the testing, because if anything, I'm making them work harder by increasing the resolution and uh, the shaders, so... Yeah, I think you can tell already by this is... is upscaled slightly. Yeah, you can see kind of how much smoother. You remember back to the, uh, the previous one, where it's quite jaggedy. It looks really good. Like, imagine this was designed for, like, you know, a pretty small handheld screen. And then now it's running in at 1080. It looks pretty good. See how bad my driving is. She likes it. Ah, oh, there we go. Something soon. Yeah, that one, that one's perfectly smooth. Even at the uh, the high resolution. So now. I believe we have PS3. You can see at the bottom there, you yeah, have to confirm it's running the, uh, the Intel HD graphics, five, uh, Intel HD graphics 530. And then it's actually, you know, is Vulcan compatible? I think it's what, you know, it's probably, probably a key point. I think, you know, generally, you know, these days, with, with the Vulcan, it's, you know, you generally get better performance than OpenGL. And this is what I mentioned before about the, with the Wii U emulator, where it was generating shaders at points during the during the game, this is sort of. Um, well, I've run through and built the caches um, already. Built the shaders already. This is sort of caching other stuff it's going to need during the gameplay, but doing it before it loads, so it doesn't interrupt the game. Which, you know, personally, I prefer. You know, I think I was mentioned before. I can't stand you playing a game, you get little, like little glitches or little pauses while it's doing something. It kind of just it, it throws you off the gameplay. And just sort of, for me, it kind of just affects the experience, so I'd much prefer it to do it ahead of time. So, just jump into this quickly. You can see it's running absolutely fine. And I think, yeah, the PS3, I don't think I've, I've changed anything on here, I don't know what tweaks it. But I think this is this is probably the limit for this this system. I mean, having said that, I think PS3 at the moment is pretty much the higher system. You know, PS3 and, and Wii U are probably the higher systems that you know, Batasura will will emulate. I think Xbox 360 is coming to Batasura soon. I read somewhere it's in, in the next version. I guess that's something comparable to PS3. 
Although I do think the PS3 emulation is ahead of Xbox 360 at the moment, from what I've seen. Certainly with the performance and the, the uh, compatibility of the games. A lot more runs in there. Runs in the PS3 emulator. But as you can see, this is, this is running perfectly fine. I'll see again here. PS3 system running in a, a business PC. Standard on on board graphics. Very very impressive, I'd say. Um, one thing I've not got in the video that's like I say it's, it's not in battery yet is, is the Xbox 360. Um, so I did have a quick test of that on the not this PC but the PC before um, one with the uh, the Intel i7 because. Um, so obviously, like I say, it's not not bad series, but I downloaded it for, for Windows, running it at Windows 11, and I think that yeah, like I say, the compatibility with the number of games that actually play in that in the uh, emulator for the 360 is a lot less. But I did find a game. I downloaded um, Joyride Turbo, which is a game yeah, we, we like playing on the on the Xbox One. It's, it's a 360 game, but it's backwards compatible. So we play it. And that that played absolutely fine in the emulator. Played played at full speed. The actual gameplay itself, uh, for whatever reason, ran at a low, quite a low resolution, a bit blocky, but it ran perfectly fine. So you're know, more than playable. Um, so hopefully they'll they'll improve that over time. But yeah, so so that that, that PC, the, you know, the PC with the i7 is you know quite capable of running um, Xbox 360 emulation as well. So but I think it's kind of the limit at the moment. You, it, going above that, obviously, there's no emulators for Xbox One at the moment. Um, there's no emulators for PS4. If they are, they must be in development at very, very early stages. They're nowhere near ready. Nowhere near sort of, you know, where to play retail games on. So, kind of, I guess, PS3 and, and like the Wii U and probably the 360. Probably the limit these days, at the moment, anyway. So, and you can pretty much do all of it on, on PCs that are several years old so I'm just gonna do do we here quickly So yeah, apologies for having to sit and watch me play. <laughs> but I guess it's, it's what the video is about. It's about playing the games and uh, seeing how well the system does. So. The game plays pretty well, I don't. <laughs> Ninth. So bad. So yeah, that's obviously working fine. All fine and dandy. And now the last one. A little bit of Wii U. And America again. Surprise, surprise.
taking a few minutes longer to load. And that's me pressing the wrong button. Just again, the, uh, the old A and B buttons are switched on this. That'll so skip through. Make all the defaults. And then get into the game. So again, it, it's hard to tell whether it's full speed or not. It looks, obviously it looks fine. There's no kind of fra obvious frame skipping or anything like that. It's just hard to know whether it is, uh, whether this is full speed or not. I say it's without playing original, on original hardware. Like I said, I probably could have enabled the, um, the frames per second counter. So it might be, I don't know, look at it now, it might be a little bit slow. Maybe it's not quite full speed, but I don't know. That's a computer guess, but. Maybe I'll keep an eye out for a cheap second hand Wii U. I'm sure, I'm sure I read you can mod those as well, so. First place at the moment, looking good. I guarantee it won't last. Still first. Oh, there we go. Anyway, that's where you. Oh, looking lovely. Oh, and this is where, yeah, I did actually. Oh, because I convinced it was full speed, so I was just going to try and run it at a much lower resolution. Just to see whether there's a. any quicker. But yeah, on this one I did, I've got an Xbox game on this one as well, so. I know I haven't done it on the other ones, but I just just to complete this to show the Xbox as well. And I think it's, you know, I think by now we know that the first two systems, the two really old systems, they're not going to run Xbox anyway, so not even worth trying it on there. And the the other two systems, I'm pretty sure that the uh, the other i7 system is going to run this okay. But just running it on here just to show that it runs well. so far it does. 
So yeah, I guess I guess while this is running, this is just the last clip though, just in summary, I guess, and a conclusion is that you know, even the oldest PC, even ones I've got there dating back to 2010, which were you know desktop and a and a laptop, they can run all the you know, all the old classic systems, you know, the arcade and your, uh, your Mega Drive Master System, NES, SNES, uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, all that kind of era that they, they, they should be fine with. So yeah, you don't need a you know a modern up to date system to play them. And then even to play like I'm doing here, the Xbox, the PS2, PS3, the Wii, even though you, you don't need a modern up to date gaming PC that costs you hundreds, if not you know near a thousand pound with the latest graphics card in. You just don't need it for emulation at this, at this stage. Obviously, it will help, and if you want to run you know, your PS2 games or whatever at a massive resolution and really upscale them, run them in 4K, then yes, maybe you'll need a more powerful system. But I've done it here, you know, on the on this system now, the the, the Dell. Um, I've, I've upscaled with uh, PS1, PS2. And it's absolutely fine. And like I say, it's that's that CPU was launched in 2015, so you know the, it's a, was it seven, eight years old, the system. So yeah, and like I say, you, you, I got that dirt cheap off, off eBay. Um, you can just say oh, what I might do is have a quick look in around and put some links in the description, just an example, um, of the, the kind of price we're talking about. So so yeah, you. You really don't need a modern, super powerful PC. Like I say, if you're going to run the Windows games, the AAA games, and you want a high resolution, all, all the settings turned on, then yeah, you're going to need, you know, the latest CPU, latest graphics card, which is going to cost you a lot of money. But like I say, for emulation, as long as you've got a decent CPU, because if a lot of it still comes down to the CPU, then you should be fine. Um, and for the, these latest systems, a decent graphics card. But like I said, the the HD cards, and the, like I say, these these are the uh, so the, not HD cards, but the onboard oh, HD funny. Intel graphics cards. Um, they, they had, you know, in more recent times, the Intel ones have kind of caught up a bit and and you know, now give you half decent performance. Obviously, nowhere near the kind of your latest Nvidia and uh, and and Radeon cards, but but yeah, so. I just went back. I think I, I'm not sure whether I showed this at the beginning, but just went around and, and just showing the specs again, just checking the temperature. It's 46 degrees. Yeah, it's not really breaking a sweat. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this is the yeah, Mario Kart again. I think this is where I go back and actually we'll try it quickly in the low resolution. I mean, 64480 is kind of the lowest you can go. I think that's what I end up going with. Low resolution, much sure we're in Vulcan. Not sure about it. I mean, we're Batasira, you know, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. Like I say, this, this is not a video that's promoting Batasira anyway, it's just that's what I happen to be using, but it, yeah, it's one of those systems that everything's kind of pre set up for you, so you shouldn't really need to tweak stuff. So this is this, uh, just trying that Marikot again. A bit of low resolution, just see if it's any speedier. Yes, yeah, so you can see that it is running much lower resolution now. I mean, the graphics still look pretty good to me. And again, the wrong button. Keep. <laughs> and again. Keep forgetting those switched A and B buttons on the uh, Nintendo. So I just skip through, just pick up the defaults. Go, go, go. Yeah, so luckily okay, this was the video was doing answer that question that I see quite a lot in forums and Facebook groups that, you know, I've just got a new PC or I've just been gifted a PC or bought one, what can I emulate? And the answer is, 
most systems up up to PS1 probably on on pretty much all hardware most of, you know as long as it's not absolutely archaic and you know from like more than 10 years ago well I'll say that these, these are from between 10 and 12 years 13 years old so you know anything from that and newer you're going to be fine if it is a really old PC then, then yeah maybe not but to be honest these old systems I've got here, these, you know, the HP one, the two laptop and the desktop, they're the kind of ones that people have probably given away anyway. You know, old PC, not one did. Kind of thing you get on, on the old Facebook marketplace or, or, or groups. Um, yeah. Yeah, like I say, you should be you should be good to go with most systems. So yeah, that, that's, that's the resolution there. Low resolution, just to play a bit smoother and I think. It make a great deal of difference, to be honest. So maybe I will need to just check it. Maybe I'll see some videos online about the gameplay. So yeah, that's pretty much the video. I like, apologies, it was a long one, but like I said, I wanted to try and uh, try and answer that question about what what you can uh, what you can emulate. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. Uh, if you did, please subscribe. Um, please like the video and uh, spread the word. Uh, thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.